care of what's looking up on the chat. Then you can't send a message to more than 20 around 20 recipients. Welcome, everybody, to another live stream of In the Black. I'm Mike, alongside with Troy. Today is Sunday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Might be in a little bit of trouble if we're recording a live stream of Valentine's Day, but since we are kind of snowed in, Troy, it's uh, uh, a little brisk. I think it's about 15 degrees outside here in North Texas. Uh, some very atypical weather going on. So we weren't going out much anyway, with the pandemic anyways. It's going to be a stay-at-home Valentine's Day. We don't want to work each other to death. So we're hopping on the live stream, and we're going to talk about some things that happened last week, uh, the close of the market, and some things we expect to happen this week. We all know that Monday is President's Day. The market will be closed, uh, so you will not be able to make any trades tomorrow. But from Tuesday to Friday, I think there's going to be some interesting action uh, coming about. Uh, and specifically, I'm looking at uh, two big things that are on my radar. Um, AMC, I'm still invested in that, still following up on that uh, to see uh, how that unfolds. I'm, I'm curious. Um, I, I don't think, think that saga is over. I think it still has uh, a little bit of runway left. So uh, I'm still invested. I hadn't sold anything yet. Um, and I actually Actually, I'm actually thinking about buying more um, to continue the dollar cost average down uh, my cost basis. And also looking at CCIB, this is something that I've been on since around, I'm going to say my, I got in around, around $17, $18. And uh, I never thought I would see it run up this high before a merger announcement. So we're going to get into a little bit of news about CCIB. Um, and then we can talk about some of the weed stocks. They, they, they blew up this week. That was part of the Wall Street bets, you know, Reddit, uh, you know, next new crazy thing to get pushed. And we saw a huge spike in those companies and thinking about Sundial growers and companies like that. So we can get into talking about a little bit about that. A lot of interesting things are happening in the market. Um, the market is definitely, uh, I think, changing. And I think uh, people are using the power of social media, using the power uh, of the retail buyer to really... Uh, you know, make some profits. In some cases, you're making some losses if you got in at the wrong time. So it's going to be, uh, it was an interesting week. I think this week coming up will be interesting. We also have uh, a lot of news coming out of Washington in terms of uh, these uh, new round of stimulus money coming out. Best believe a lot of that stimulus money is going to end up this way into the stock market. So interesting to see that. And then I'd also want, want to talk on, uh, touch on a little bit about uh, Bitcoin. And uh, all the cryptocurrencies, they've been making a surge. Some people say it's alt season. Uh, I'm not sure if it's quite alt season yet because Bitcoin is still surging, in my opinion. And we're starting to see more companies uh, adopt Bitcoin um, as part of their cash reserve. Tesla was a major one to make that announcement last week. And uh, what we, you know, give our thoughts on what we think the future of Bitcoin and other uh, similar uh, cryptocurrencies are going to be going forward because I think that is a Definitely a market that uh, if you're not invested in, you need to get invested as, uh, into crypto as an asset class. So we'll talk about that. I uh, just want to start off saying that we are not financial advisors. We have no idea what we're talking about. We have no idea what we're talking about. We're just trying to mix it in. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah.
Exactly. Yeah. I can hear you. Keep going. Oh, someone says you can't hear you. Hmm. Well, well, since you can't hear Troy, you can hear my voice. Uh, so yeah, crypto is a interesting thing. Like you said, um, just a few few years ago, a lot of institutional investors and institutions uh, All right, that should work. on traditional Wall Street were down in crypto so bad. They're talking about how it's a fad and how it can never be a real asset class. And essentially, if you invested in that, you're a fool. But uh, looks like uh, they have been quietly, and here's the thing, they have been quietly adding crypto as one of their positions. I'm talking about uh, mm -hmm. Fidelity. I'm talking about uh, JP Morgan. I'm talking about, uh, um, uh, believe Charles Schwab as well. Uh, a lot of these old money institutions um, are starting to add crypto as an asset class and something that they're investing. They're opening up uh, uh, crypto divisions. Thanks, uh, guys. You know, to, to let you know to, to open that up as an avenue to, for their high earner investment. I know for Fidelity, I saw the news release saying that you at least need to have a hundred thousand dollars minimum to invest in. Uh, their upcoming up uh, whatever fund they're doing to uh, invest in crypto as well. So uh, it's real. You know, these big institutions are not going to get behind crypto if there was some funny money, if there was no real utility evolved into mm -hmm. it. And now that we're seeing these companies, you know, Tesla was the last major one, but we also had PayPal and Square. Those are very two big things. PayPal is allowing, uh, which is really utilizing cryptocurrency as a currency, using it, uh, using Bitcoin as a form of payment. PayPal is now facilitating that. So is Square. Uh, if those are not familiar, Square, you may know they do some of the peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, payments, like for, especially for small businesses, you'll see the little Square thing go up a food truck or something. Usually Square is the one who backs them up. Um, they, you know, you used to see they have a little thing, you just swipe your card, a little white Square, and you swipe card and that's how you pay with it that's them but they also interesting on cash app and of course you know in cash app you're now able to uh, invest and buy and send crypto in cash app as well so i, li I say i like to say a lot of times follow the money uh you know if they're starting to get into it and they're not really being super public about broadcasting it to the masses but they're starting to add that position uh to their coffers and when you start seeing these companies and these hedge funds and they have to put out uh essentially letting people know um they're not private, they're a public company that can let people know what things they're investing their money into. You start seeing crypto assets popping up. Heck, I even saw an article that had Princeton, I believe Princeton and Yale and maybe Harvard uh, were using some of their endowment to invest mm -hmm. in Bitcoin because they believe it was a future. So when sense. I say that smart money is sense. on crypto, that's, that's where the trend is headed. So, uh, you know, everybody missed that kind of opening uh, salvo that I had there, but um, you know, I wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day today. We're here talking about money before the honey. Uh, me and Mike are both married, and we're up here talking money with you guys. Um, but we were, uh, what I brought up was we started talking about Bitcoin. And I remember a few years ago when Bitcoin hit $20,000, um, it hit that point. It was getting every, a lot of excitement around cryptocurrency, and we saw the large institutional uh, voices, the banks, Many uh, large uh, institutional powerful people spoke out against it. They pushed down against it. They rejected cryptocurrency. And what we've come to find out is silently, when they drove the price down uh, about three years ago, that they've been silently putting their own money into it and preparing their own large institutional uh, banks and finance funds to get involved in cryptocurrency so that they could ride this wave along with it. And that's what's happened. Uh, that's what Mike touched on. Now we see so many major i mean wall street banks are getting closer to adopting bitcoin uh bitcoin and cryptocurrency is here to stay and the rate of growth that it has had has been amazing over these past really especially if you look at the entire five years but there are people who thought 20k was it mike they thought that was all it was going to hit and i remember we definitely had some uh um you know we know if you uh, have a few friends call them crypto profits you know our fellow crypto kings who saw what this was going to be and after a while i think the large institutional banks and finance groups they saw it themselves and they put their own money on it and now everyone's starting to accept it now we have cities looking to accept it and we have larger larger voices cryptocurrency has essentially gone mainstream and it's not going anywhere um especially as we see what volatility you know people were upset about the wild volatility of cryptocurrency especially altcoins but the stock markets can be volatile 
Uh, they have no problems with hedge funds out there making the stock market as volatile as possible. And cryptocurrency is proving itself to be almost a hedge against volatility in the stock market. It's actually good for it, Mike. It's been driving its price to the sky. It's actually a hedge against the dollar as well. It is a hedge uh, against the dollar. You look at you, uh, you look at uh, different fiat currencies, and uh, for people who don't know what a fiat currency is, a currency backed by government. Um, but essentially, there's nothing other than your confidence in that government backing that mm -hmm. currency. There's no, it's not backed in gold by anymore. U.S. dollars used to be backed by gold. You should actually say that. Um, now, you know, it's nothing backed by uh, just the, the, your, your belief that that dollar is strong because that country is strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, you know, if the country were to falter, let's say, uh, you know, heaven forbid the United States were to take a step back on the world stage, the, the influence and the power and the purchasing power of that dollar will also fall too. Now, the reason why crypto is uh, currency so important, just like buying gold or silver or any other uh, asset class, um, it has its own uh, sense of store value. You know, Bitcoin, uh, the power of Bitcoin, this, this is something that's not. So I think a lot of people get confused with cryptocurrencies and it can be very confusing. Uh, but in basic terms, at least we'll, we'll, we'll just talk about Bitcoin for right now. It's a totally, uh, uh, it, it can't be inflated, right? There's a set amount of Bitcoin, I believe it's 20 million Bitcoin. Um, and there can never be any more or any less. That's it. Um, whether some, you know, there's some out there that are lost in wallets, never to be seen again, whatever, too bad. Uh, there's, there's a capped fixed supply of Bitcoin. And once all that Bitcoin, my, uh, uh, Bitcoin is mined, I believe 18 million coins around 18, between 18 and 19 million coins have been mined already. But once all those coins have been mined, that's it. There's going to be no more Bitcoin, uh, mm -hmm. being created is a fixed asset there can never be more it's not inflationary so when you have something when there's supply a uh when there's a limited supply and an increasing demand you want to see the price continue to increase and that's one of the powers of bitcoin secure uh store of value um it can't be hacked it can't be duplicated you can't just make more bitcoin out of thin air um they have something called smart con smart contracts and they have a ledger where it's a consensus of multiple computers saying that they validate every transaction record every transaction so even if uh, a couple of no, in the united states where they can stand back in the uh, world stage, beat the, the, the influence that's the power of bitcoin so what these companies are saying and what kathy woods a lot of people know kathy woods for ark invest uh, she said that if every com uh she said she gave Bitcoin, I believe, a five hundred thousand dollar price target, and her thought behind that was that if every company and the S and P five hundred were to make, I believe it was like it was less than five percent of their cash reserves convert that to Bitcoin, it would shoot the price up that much. Mm -hmm. And then we're only talking about five percent. That's only for the com uh, the companies in the S and P five hundred. Imagine about all the other companies, and then think about at what point. Will nations start adding cryptocurrency, start adding to Bitcoin as now, a reserve, reserve they validate like every transaction in their transaction federal reserve? When that happens, I mean, it's it's you know, it, sky is the limit. You know, Bitcoin right now for me, I think it could be anywhere between a hundred thousand dollars to me is a fair case for the end of the this year, twenty twenty one. But I think. Uh, Two hundred fifty thousand dollars is totally within the realm of possibility uh, for a bull case for this year. Uh, I really think, in the long term, in the next five to ten years, uh, Bitcoin will be over a million dollars per coin. And uh, I saw my uh, one. Uh, I have a, a friend of mine, uh, Joey. You know, he's very big into crypto. He told me I, I was talking to him on the phone the other day. He said, "If you own 0.27 Bitcoin, you're in the top one percent." of uh, Bitcoin holders in the entire world. Think about that, 0.27% Bitcoin. 0.27% uh, Bitcoin will put you in the top 1% of all the holders in the world, right? Uh, you see big money buying this up. You see billionaires starting to buy this up. Mark Cuban has come out as a big proponent for cryptocurrency. You all know Elon Musk and his uh, his Dogecoin memes and things like that. But you notice he didn't add Dogecoin to uh, the coffers of uh, Tesla. He added Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them all. Bitcoin fails. Uh, I think all of them fail essentially. But uh, you know, they're all tied to Bitcoin. If you look at the the price movement of cryptocurrency in the whole, it's tied to what Bitcoin does. Uh, mm -hmm. Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them all. And if you're thinking about getting invested, we'll probably do a whole another um, 
live stream, but just walk you through how do I get invested? How do I start getting invested into Bitcoin? We'll probably do a whole separate, uh, you know, uh, live stream about that. But if you're looking at getting to, into cryptocurrency, the first thing I would advise is to look at Bitcoin, study it, try to understand it, um, to know what you're investing in. But I honestly say, at least for me, because I'm not a financial advisor, we're not financial advisors, that's one thing that I am trying to, right at this point, uh, continually add uh, and purchase more and more Bitcoin to, to add to my portfolio of uh, investable assets down there. I'm adding the Bitcoin and I'm adding uh, key um, alt stocks, uh, alt, alt coin, excuse me. Um, and you can buy and trade them like stocks for those who don't know. And their price fluctuates. The value of each individual unit, whether it be the alt coin or the Bitcoin itself, has fluctuated. Um, obviously, Bitcoin is approaching all time highs. And if we can just back it up, I mean, look at this month long chart here. I mean, you could have got in at $30,000 of Bitcoin back in January 21st. Um, it hit 30 around Wednesday the 27th most recently. And look at this run that it has been on. If we stretch it out for a year, I mean, man, back in the, when the uh, financial collapse after COVID, you could have got a Bitcoin for four to five grand that you would have earned $43,000 per if you'd have bought at that price. That's an amazing return on investment. Uh, this outpaces any stock, any stock in the market. Nothing else has ran this hard and this fast over this amount of time and then you hit this peak here that happened in back in about january and we can look, look up you know some people freaked out some people sell and sold but the reality is this is a long-term hold a long-term vision uh, we're going to see fifty thousand dollars in bitcoin uh possibly before the end of the month um and who knows where this will be at the end of the year there are some people who think as high as 100k again we are not financial uh, advisors or our professionals when we make that prediction but it's clear. You can see the run and the work that Bitcoin has. And there are tons of other altcoins. Um, I had uh, Ether as my second largest holding. And we'll just take a look at that. Uh, Ether has been on an absolute tear as well. Um, you could have got this for, you know, 1100 It's almost doubled its value um, just in the last month alone. And a year ago, again, you could have got... Uh, smaller coins that you get got little chunks of $122 for ether coin and here we are up uh, approaching its all-time highs as well the better question is what isn't at approaching a near all-time high when it comes to the altcoin market Mike uh, one of my favorites you know what I still don't know the proper way they're pronouncing this uh, is it Avi or Avi? Ave. Ave. there we go Ave price um, uh, they don't have that one up here to give me a nice an easy thing. Let's take a look at Coinbase, but um, let's see. We'll look at the, we can look at the all-time history there. But knowing that this bad boy started out at fifty-one cents a coin in October, I got. I tell you, Mike, I wish I had that ninety-two thousand percent up. Um, there are all coins doing this. Um, you know, our good friend. You know, who's a big, uh, big investor in Ave? Who's that? Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban uh, is a huge investor in Ave. Uh, and let's say, you know, hey, rich people, see, there's one thing that rich people know how to do is to make more money. Oh, right? absolutely. Uh, <laughs> they, so, they don't just easy. put their feet up and leave it in the bank account. They make their money work for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're not invested and your money's not working for you, then it's, it's, it's not doing, it's doing a disservice to you, actually, because it loses money over time due to inflation. Um, so, but you got to put your money into work. And like you said, I mean, these crypto, especially these all altcoins are taking off. But like I said, I think the first thing, if you're new to this, A, research and B, start mm -hmm. with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them all. Um, none of them will ever take off without, with Bitcoin doing poorly. Um, so that is like, that. that is the back on which every other currency rides on um, because it's, it's the first mover advantage. It's the most trusted secure. Everybody, even if you've never invested in cryptocurrency, everybody's heard of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, going forward, and like I said, we'll probably do a live stream to talk about how to start investing in, um, into these. And then you got these DeFi coins um, that are a little bit more involved to get into. Um, yeah, like those are definitely like more in-depth. Swap and Sushi Swap and uh, One Inch and all that stuff like that. Um, we'll we'll talk about you know how you know how to evolve in that. But that the biggest be, thing is understanding uh, the topic for a separate chat. Yeah, definitely. The biggest thing is understanding, and they explain many coins you can go look and they tell you. So, Avi is an Ethereum token that powers Avi. Um, some are backed up by Bitcoin, and they're backed up by the different technologies that that each bit, each coin 
has their own white paper and they explain exactly what they are, why they are. Um, some of them were created as jokes. Keep in mind, there's a lot of scam coins out there. Uh, there's a lot of joke coins out there that people have actually took, flipped and turned for real monies, like the Doge. Um, you know, and then there's some that are very serious, some that have a, a legitimate application to the real world and to the finance industry that solve problems, creating frictionless transfer of money amongst large financial institutions instead of the, you know, I'll give you a prime example. And I, I mentioned it to you the other day, Mike. Um, you know, we one of our last live streams, we talked about Robin Hood and the fallout. And one of it was me moving my over to the brokerage Fidelity and then being knocked in the face with just how long it takes for that money to transfer amongst banks and how long it takes for that money to clear. Um, it basically took all week. Whereas, you know, we're operating with the Bitcoin, we're operating with many of these various uh, crypto ecosystems, that money can be moved almost instantaneously in comparison. It can be moved in a matter of minutes. Um, I know Bitcoin, and I remember way back when in the beginning, uh, when I, I'm not going to say the beginning, but a few years ago, you, you know, when you move from one wallet to the other, you used to have to wait a few minutes. And I used to, you know, you'd be upset about 30 minute waits or what have you, um, based on just, you know, the calculations that would happen. But waiting, the, the, all of those time frames absolutely demolished the time of waiting for money to move from one bank and move my, you know, entire portfolio over to Fidelity and waiting for a few weeks just for my, you know, 20 uh, some odd K to just clear so that I could begin buying and trading uh, aside from the uh, spoiling that Robinhood gives you when they front you that money. So, yeah, yeah and, there are a lot of useful applications for cryptocurrencies and they're based in real technologies that have a real benefit because there's some people who say this is backed up by nothing. Um, and you mentioned earlier our fiat currencies backed up uh, essentially by the guns of our military is what it's really backed up by. Um, but it's backed up by the trust and stability of our government. Um, you know, not to delve too far into politics. We've seen just how unstable government can be sometimes. Uh, but the money keeps rolling, the money keeps flowing. But one thing that they cannot control is the decentralized coins, the DeFi that you touched on. And that's a much deeper story. But it provides an alternate method of currency for you know the masses. Something that money can be moved and it can't see and touch. And there's people who who that bothers. There's governments out there that wish they want to know who has what, who's paying for what, when, where, why, and how, and they want to and they want to follow that money on their own. But decentralized finance prevents that. It truly provides that freedom and anonymity. Um, these coins have an actual legitimate value, guys. And as you can see. Um, hell, look, this percentage here, just what $100 bought at the start. Imagine turning $100 into $92,000. Um, now, you know, when I say our professionals, I damn sure missed out on that one. I wish it did catch some of that, Mike. But there's lots of money to be made in the growing of these cryptocurrencies, and they're not going anywhere. This is the future technology. You ever see in those sci-fi movies, you know, they always talk about credits or whatever the heck it is, some sort of, you know, um, method of currency that isn't the dollar. Um, this, that's the few, you can see the cryptocurrencies are the beginning of that possible future. And you can see where that technology has begun and where we have no idea where it will go, but I darn sure want to be a, a part of that ride and do your research, do your due diligence in each and every coin. Um, commune we have a nice community amongst ourselves mike and we're trying to create one to spread it uh via these live streams and what have you but where people can share information and we can uh help avoid the scamsters out there um and there are some coins that are so small you can jump on them nice and early i'm sure somebody was buying this uh Abe. somebody was buying this well before it went public if you will but that's one of the big things but there's a lot of money to be made in here if you have billionaires and you have banks and you got you know, old money like J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs getting their dollars in here. That should tell people something. That should be a wake-up call for people to start getting involved in the cryptocurrency world. Um, so, so here's a massive disclaimer, uh, especially if you're investing in DeFi uh, coins. Um, they are a lot of, and I mean a lot of scammers out there. There are a lot of clones of different projects that slightly change. You can, because a lot of projects are open source code and they can go on GitHub and copy. Some are trying to intentionally and use make, and, make a, uh, and uh, make a clone of the project. 
But, uh, and there's things called rug pools where they look like they're launching legitimate coin. They let you, you know, buy in, you put in your ETH and uh, they, 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 they snatch the rug out, out underneath it. You take all the ETH and run with it. So there's a lot of ways. And then you have coins just never get off. You know, it sounds like a good idea, but never gets the backing, never gets the community support and it just doesn't take off. So when I say investing in these altcoins, and that's why I suggest people don't invest in altcoins right away, just invest in Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum. Especially if you're um, new. But, um, you know, you can lose mo a lot of money really fast. And there's nobody to complain to when you lose money in a cryptocurrency. There's no place to call. There's no place to email. There's no place to write. There's nobody no cares. Once your money is gone, it is gone. You can't get it back. If you send money to the wrong address, it's gone forever. You can't get it back. There's no reaching out to whoever that you don't know. Um, anonymity is part of uh, the lure of cryptocurrency. So, um, just you know, I would I would highly advise if you're new in general to cryptocurrency, don't even get involved in things like DeFi right away. Just get your toes wet with like Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum. Um, but as you continue to grow your knowledge base and continue to grow your investments in, into different cryptocurrencies, then you start looking at DeFi um, because that's a whole other beast. You can lose money fast. I've seen people lose money really fast and lose all their money. Um, so you have to be uh, very cautious. But I also seen people make a lot of money very quickly um so you have to be cautious about it so uh, if you're new and i'm not a financial advisor but if i was recommending it to myself i would not even touch DeFi. um i wouldn't even look at any of these other coins i would just look at bitcoin and ethereum and then i would slowly uh start you know exposing myself to these other assets um and cryptocurrencies and other coins um because it's so it, it is risky it's a it's a pretty much a, almost totally unregulated um in terms of these DeFi apps so uh you have to be uh, uh aware of that and there's a lot of scammers on reddit a lot of scammers on telegram and you know i saw some guy who got scammed on one telegram just saying that one guy said he wanted to buy his position of this one altcoin um said he wanted to buy at higher than market price which should have been a red flag and said just send it to this address which was supposed to be a middleman he was sending the eve to that address and then that middleman was sent to both parties and he sent them all his uh underlying asset and boom that was gone he got scammed out of thousands of dollars happens every day so uh don't get scammed if it looks sometimes it looks too good to be true it probably is and do your own research this is like cryptocurrencies like penny stocks on steroids um you gotta be careful got to be uh so um but let's uh move forward a little bit let's talk about amc and uh uh, the reason I want to talk about AMC is we saw that they were supposed to publish last Tuesday their short interest. And what we've been seeing is, according to whatever source you get the short interest from, the numbers are not consistent, Troy. They're, they're mm -hmm. all over the place. I've seen stuff as low as in the teens, the things high in the 80s. What is one to believe? Uh, I think this is almost like the, 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 the proof in the pudding uh, that there is clear market manipulation when it comes to uh, these Wall Street bet stocks. Um, it's, it's really astounding. Um, and here's a key thing about I think people need to know about short interest. They're self-reported. That means that these hedge funds have to self-report what their short interest is. They don't have to, but it's, it's on them if they want to and if they want to get accurate numbers. And they don't have to. They don't have to report it all. They don't have to tell you the truth. It's all self-reported. Uh, with that in mind, it's easy, you can see it's easy for them to manipulate the broader market still by underreporting or not reporting what their actual short interest is. Um, so I think there's still games being played. I look at the, I look at the, uh, the way the market moves. I see the volume, there's a lot more buying pressure than selling pressure, but the stock either goes down or moves sideways. It, 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 it doesn't make sense whatsoever. Um, you gotta think of all these people that bought in and you know the teens and the upper, upper nines and eights and sevens, they're not selling for losses, especially you have people that have hundreds of shares. They're not selling for losses. I would say anybody over uh, 50, 75, 100 shares are not going to just sit there and sell for losses. They have more of those diamond hands we'd like to talk about. But, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing to see that they're still doing these, uh, you know, possibly these short ladder packs and other ways to manipulate the market into showing a lower price. Now, I did see something that the amount of outstanding shares, the amount of shares that are available for trade uh, mm -hmm. is down around 200,000, I believe. Um, 
which is quite amazing. So what's that tell you that, you know, there's not that many shares floating around. Um, and if those continue to get bought up, something has to happen, something has to come to a head. If there's still real short interest there, at some point they're going to have to buy. And you can still see that short squeeze happen, in my humble opinion. Um, but it's going to be, it's a battle of attrition at this point. Who's going to give in? Uh, at this point, I still have, I'm going to show you my, my position. I still have uh, all my AMC. I'm actually really thinking about adding more to it uh, this week because on, on take out all the short interest, take out everything, all of that, uh, you know, all the Wall Street best stuff. I still think AMC, I don't see the movie theaters going anywhere anytime soon. I think actually the pandemic has highlighted, uh, has actually highlighted how much we do miss going to the movies. I think there's a backlog of movies um, that want to be released in theaters. And uh, I really think that it's in long term, I mean, long term, the next throughout this year to mid 2022, this is a, you know, $20 stock. Um, so even right now, I still think it's at a massive discount. So even if you let it play out all the way until next year, you'll make your money back if, you have, if you're patient, in my opinion. Um, you can see now my, I, what is it, my average cost is around $14.37. I might buy down sitting at 500 shares. Uh, I might, I might buy more. I might add another 100 shares tomorrow. Um, continue to drive down my dollar cost average, but I, I still believe in the stock long term. Actually, uh, you know, I like the stock as they say. I like going to the movies, and I think uh, there's some, you know, there's rumors circling around about them getting bought by Amazon or Netflix. And if something like that does occur, you'll definitely see a big pop in the stock price. Um, so I, I'm gonna hold on to this. Uh, I know Troy, you had a different story, um, mm. but uh, I, you know, I, I like it. You know, for me, this is more of a, a long-term, almost experiment at this point because you know I lost so much. How much am I down? What four thousand dollars? Four thousand four hundred seventy dollars. Mind you, that's not even taking into account. See, a lot of people tell you about their wins. You know, we'll tell you about our losses. That's not mm. even taking into account some options I took out that expired last Friday, and I got a few hundred. Your bucks, but, but I was down for you know a little over four thousand dollars with those. So you know, all in total, you know, I'm between nine ten thousand dollars down in AMC. Uh, but I I just I just don't feel like selling right now. I don't I don't see the need to. Um, now you may be different. Some people may want to see really use that money use it somewhere else. Um, but they think they can make their you know get more return out of their investment. Just take the loss. You know you know you can get a tax break off of it a little bit. Um, some people might need them. My, hopefully, if you really need the money for bills, then you should have a property of investing in it. Shouldn't be investing that they, money at all. Yeah, they took it out. So uh, you got to figure out what's right for you. But, you know, for me, I, I'm deciding to stay. I'm being it for the long haul. Uh, I don't think I'm looking. Uh, what about, what, what are your thoughts on it, Troy? Um, so for myself, um, I, I definitely, I'm still holding some of it for the long haul. And actually, I'm looking to recoup some of my losses. You touched on it there. When you see the price go down, the stock, is, this is critical. If you believe in it, of course is you can dollar cost average your way out of a hole sometimes. Obviously, you need the stock price to go up. But um, your average cost is $14.37. That's because you bought more on, on a dip. If I'm not, uh, uh, yes, yeah, my average, my average cost is around 17 bucks. Um, so by buying, yeah. when you see it drop, you can lower your, your average cost per share. And what you're looking for is to get your stock price back above that average cost per share so you can begin to profit. Um, I no longer have, so my chart's going to look a little different. Because uh, and I was going to uh, pick on you there for having Robin Hood, Robin Hood there, but yeah. um, <laughs> I'm still in the process. I, I am entirely I'm, out. Yeah. I'm entirely, I'm not out. entirely so out. yet. This yeah, is me punching good. out here, just in my in my own stock history. My original share, 100 shares, were bought at four dollars and fifty five cents. Those would be profitable even at its current price. Um, I bought another hundred shares, and I remember I mentioned this in the group chat. I do not like buying market orders at open because they got me right here. These sixteen dollars and fifty cents. Because what was, what was happening is I was looking at that price fluctuate and trying to cancel and see where it was going to flow. That's fine. Um, the average is still $200 based on all this money that I paid here. We're not going to dive too deep in that math, but I think most people get the average cost per price. Um, so I bought another at 100 at 11.30, and as this price dropped, I bought another hundred and another hundred, lowering my dollar cost average down to pretty close. I, this ended up being roughly. I don't have the neat chart because I, I pulled out of Robinhood there. 
but uh, this ended up being roughly negative $1,500 lost right here. And then this went over into uh, Fidelity, which, um, you know, I like Fidelity, definitely a respectable uh, institution. But Man's Nats Pretty is looking at the charts with Robinhood, and I think that's what gets a lot of people in. I get annoyed when I hear people talk about things um, like the gamification and Rob, Robin Hood's made it all look like a game. I'm like, oh, no, absolutely not. In fact, I think I only got one last free stock that somebody signed up for in my Robin Hood. I've gotten all of my money up out of there, man. But um, when you're looking at AMC at these prices here, per, I'm, I, I'm probably, and you mentioned tomorrow, the stock market will be closed in an observation of the federal holiday. So on Tuesday, I definitely will be looking to get some of this low share price here because the reality is we're either going to see the end of movie theaters as we know it. They're going to go away. They're going to go bankrupt and not going to exist. That's our unprofessional opinion. Or we are going to see these things rise and recover one day, whether it's being sold or it's once things open up, hopefully later on in the year, once we have a, a vaccinated population, you know, we have some competence in government getting people back out and getting commerce up and running. Uh, we will see AMC return. So that's the long hold. Uh, this, the money that we invest, you also touched on that, Mike. You want it to be money that you don't need immediate access to so we can hold through these sorts of... Uh, just so we get my dogs in the backyard enjoying the snow, guys. But um, you want to have your, your money that you can hold so you do not have to sell at a bad time. And you can even double down by buying in these low dips. This is a great price. This is almost as low as my very first purchase of $4.55 was. So I can l further lower my dollar cost average so that if this thing gets back to 10 bucks, I'll have made money, Mike. Um, hell, if I buy more shares at this price, it won't have to hit 10 bucks. It can get back to about nine and I'll have made money. And that allows you to get yourself out of a hole. When you, when you guys, I showed you guys earlier, I end up purchasing some of those shares as high as $16.50. But by buying more shares, because I believe in this company as a whole, not just uh, the meme stocks. And, and we've talked a lot in our past streams about the condensation, the condensation, the uh, condescension of a lot of these talking heads we see on television. A lot of research and effort was put in many of the stocks that gave, that the Wall Street's bets Reddit had put in. That's why GameStop was pushed up so high because they realized it was overly shorted. And that's why AMC was on its way up. Uh, you know, we beat a dead horse here before Robinhood snuffed that thing out by putting their buying restrictions on it. So there is room for these stocks to grow. Either they're going to go bankrupt because that's what hedge funds want. They want this thing to go down to a dollar. But uh, a lot of people should understand that Wall Street being the house that is the gambling casino. They always win. They're going to win on both sides of this, Mike. There are going to be people who are going to short that sucker, yeah. and they're making money on the down. You bet your bottom dollar there are large institutional uh, uh, investment firms that are buying this at this price to send back on up. And they're going to ride that wave, and they'll need to see it go to 100 bucks. They'll make money by the billions if the sucker doubles its current value. And uh, and that's 100 Right, the, the house always wins. That's the old adage if you, if you gamble. Um, like you said, I'm with you. I still think this is still in play. So we're going to keep looking at that. Um, I want to show one thing we told you we're going to look at our portfolios and show you what we're invested in. Um, so I'm going to pull. Uh, and the reason, I'll show you the reason why I haven't uh, left Robinhood is because I have some options contracts that had yet to expire. Uh -huh. um, so. If you see now, I put up my portfolio on Robinhood. So I've moved some of my stuff out of Robinhood, um, but I still have these stocks. I got these options on them, and I don't want to close them out. I think they'll expire. I, I like. I'm a big proponent of selling options. So you see, if you'll notice, I have uh, uh, some options on CCIB in particular, um, and NNVM. I don't think NNVM will run up to twenty. Uh, so uh, that'll expire worthless, which is good for me. So if you're selling calls, that means you have the 100 shares of collateral and you're saying I'll sell to you at this certain strike price and you collect the premium versus buying calls. You pay the premium for the right to buy them at a certain strike price. So I like buying the shares and selling the calls. I try to sell it out of the money, far enough out of the money will never come to fruition. Thus, I collect the premium and I still keep my shares and got the run up in between. So I like doing that. So. Uh, you know, I have a call for CCIV at 40, and I do not yet want to. Uh, this is this this is funny. So CCIV 
they haven't had an announcement saying that this merger is going through, but this stock has run up uh, quite mm -hmm. a bit. You'll see I have about uh, 100 shares of CCIB. And when we look at that, you see I got in 1796, right? So it's run up quite a significant amount without a formal announcement. And when I bought it at 1796, I was thinking that this stock could double um, to maybe 40, uh, 40 to between 40 and 50 bucks at the time. Now that it's ran up so much, I, I don't know if it's still going to double. It could, it could be an $80 stock. It could be a hundred dollar stock. Um, but I don't know. Uh, it's a lot of people. Now you see this big spike. This is Friday. So we're showing Friday. You'll see this big spike right here. It ran up from about $35 all the way up to 40. Mm -hmm. That's institutional money to make a spike like that. That's institutional money buying in saying that they think this merger is going to happen and they're buying in they're saying that we're buying in and not only we're buying in we'll think the price will continue to go up even more uh and the swap are both short and long term so i personally am thinking for myself that i i don't know if i want to buy back and when i say buy back my call option so um you see this is what my total return is my total return is over 119 percent pretty good if I want to buy back this call option, I'm going to have to pay $525. Um, you know, the options close, they don't go uh, after hours. But I want to pay $525, see this $5.25 for those who don't know options, that's $5.25 per share. So I have to pay for the right to buy back my call option, pay $125. Um, you take $5.25 times 100 shares, you get $525. I have to pay that to close it out. Um, and I might do that or i might sell a put um around the 40 dollars mark to get back in and also collect the premium on that so i'm i'm this is why i haven't left because i'm really watching this closely and i'm hoping this actually for me selfishly i'm hoping it doesn't close over 40 by next friday um <laughs> i don't have to do anything but to give you an idea so i got unless it's way over <laughs> yeah so i got 110 dollars of credit when i took out this call option i took this out several weeks back thinking that there's no way it's going to you know run up to 40 you know without a formal announcement it, it, it's, it's doing it so uh you see that i'm down this is only you only realize this if you buy it back um i'm, I'm down right now now as time uh theta gets, as good uh, that's the time decay gets closer to friday um i'll start gaining this back especially if the the price is over 40. so we'll see that's why i haven't left i am still you know i am very Options very very standing yeah i'm very bullish uh, thanks to my brother-in-law for this. I'm very bullish on CCIV. Uh, I will probably add a position. I'll show you my fidelity in a second. I also have CCIV there um, already. But you know, I'm I'm bullish on I'm bullish on that stock. Um, and the big the big thing is why you know it is the SPAC. It's the Special Acquisitions Company. Um, yeah. They call them blank check companies. And the whole purpose of these companies are to gather money to bring a, another company public. Um, and it makes this transition relatively easy. And this is the big reason why uh, CCIV has rumored there's no, no confirmation, pure rumor, pure speculation. But CCIV is rumored to be the company that will bring Lucid uh, public. And for those who do not know, Lucid is an American electric vehicle manufacturer. They already have a massive plant out in Arizona, and they're working on delivering what you see on your screen right there, the Lucid Air, um, in spring of 2021, Beautiful. which is coming up very rapidly. And their goal is to enter the market with a full-size luxury sedan that is electric. They're targeting Mercedes, BMW, Audi. Uh, they're you know looking at the A8, the uh, 750, and the Mercedes... Um, is a C-Class? Is that their full-size sedan? But uh, that is their class. target. They're looking for full-size yeah. full size luxury sedans within the electric vehicle market with efficiency and range. That is their goal. And they're ready to begin selling this year. And that is the big excitement around CCIB. That's why we see this growth. Um, that's just in the last day. Let's back up to the last five and the last month. That's why we see this growth over the last month, something that was $17 just a month ago is up to almost $40 right now, all around pure speculation and rumor. And be aware, guys, there's a lot of stock market that operates on that. Um, you can come in here and, 
and see, you know, articles like this from Business Insider, Churchill Capital jumps uh, 13% amidst hopes it's nearing a deal to acquire Lucid Motors. Pure speculation. People want to get in before this explodes. What I will say, and again, we are not professionals. We are not financial advisors. But nine times out of ten, by the time you see uh, information about a stock, you know, all over a forum, all over social media, all over the place, the real money to be made is kind of, you're, you're kind of behind the eight ball on that. Yeah. You want to get in on those. Uh, yeah. Buy the rumor, things. sell the news. Mm-hmm. Buy the rumor and sell the news. So, like, there are people who bought this sucker way back here, and when that news pops and finally it breaks and it absolutely spikes, they'll be selling while some people will be buying. And that happens, or actually we're seeing a lot of that happen too much with our IPO markets. Uh, that's an entirely separate conversation, but there are a lot of people out there who believe that IPOs are broken. And, it, you know, the, the people who got in on that ground floor, if you will, they take the elevator to the top and they hop right, step right into the helicopters and fly off with your money when you're buying after that news breaks. So there's a lot of speculating that goes on in the regular stock market. Um, that's why I'm always amused when people are upset about the uh, volatility and speculation in cryptocurrency, Mike, because it happens in the stock market all the time. Um, it happens to smaller degrees. The, you know, this this stock did not go 100 times or 100,000 percent. But the reality is speculation drives tons of stock prices, man. And this is why we see this run up here. And they're not the only one. There are other SPACs out there um, who, mind you, again, a special acquisition company, they do nothing. They do nothing but raise money for bringing a potential company public, and no one has any idea what company that will be. We talked about in the past Proterra and their possible special acquisition company that they're kind of linked to um, based on all sorts of things. Uh, it's pure speculation. It's pure rumor. Here are the, even the articles to prove it. Pure uh, hopes is the magic word in that one. Um, yeah. So getting in the ground floor, that's what some people do. You know, Mike has a few shares. I have a few, uh, 100 shares myself, hoping that we can turn a quick profit in news. And the moment that thing sells, I'll watch it peek out, and I'll put a trailing stop loss on that sucker and get dive right on out of there at the top. So here is uh, something that came out Friday. Um, it came from the Bloomberg Terminal. Terminal. And those who don't know who Bloom, what the Bloomberg Terminal is, uh, it's a special subscription service essentially for uh, getting the latest and most up to date news. Right. It costs, I believe, twenty five thousand dollars a year. So mostly uh, bigger players have access to it. But this is what came out, and I think this is very, very damning evidence of how this is going to go through. So it says a consortium led by Venrock Associates proposed to sell Lucid Motors Inc. to Churchill Capital Corporation, the fourth. This transaction was proposed on uh, January 1st, 11, January 11, 2021. By financial terms of the transaction are unknown. So this shows that this, this company, Vanrock Associates, one of the uh, uh, venture capitalist firms that help uh, fund Lucid. So they have a stake in the company. Um, so what this shows is there's not just smoke here. The, uh, though neither Churchill Capital or Lucid have put out any formal thing saying they're in any kind of talks about doing this merger, uh, this goes to show you that this thing, uh, is some validity to this thing could actually really happen. Now, this is a very risky play because if it does not happen this stock could go back down to ten dollars absolutely um, free so, fall yeah okay. so you, you know you'll you'll be looking at you know uh, a, a big loss in some cases if you bought it especially around these all-time highs but if it goes through you could be looking at possibly still doubling your money i think some of the price is already baked in mm. uh but you know you never know it could be one of those things where people are like, this is a Nest American Tesla. We got to rush in and it could climb higher than than what the company's worth. We see that with a lot of the EV companies. Uh, Tesla's one, Neo's one, pretty much all of them. Um, they're, they're, they're being traded at higher than what their current value is. But I think people are now saying, I'm not trading at its current value, I'm trading at its potential um, because I believe it could you know, be a revolutionary company. Um, and that's what we're seeing, I think, with Trisha Capital's last possibly lucid. Um, now, if you're going to look at the rest of the, we show the my portfolio, uh, what's left in Robert Hood, we have Tesla. Uh, enough said on that one. Uh, I think mm -hmm. Tesla still has a lot of runway left. Actually, I think it's on a mean sale. Um, I think 
Tesla at 817 is a steal. I see this stock being anywhere between 12 and $1,600 this year with a very, 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 very bullish case of it making to close to $2,000. Um, I really think it's possible, um, mostly because Tesla has multiple sources of revenue. Um, it's not just a car company. It's not just a software company. It's an energy company. And I think that energy piece is being greatly, greatly undervalued. And their experience in China, I love it. Uh, me personally, uh, I'm gonna probably look to ask more shares of Tesla this week, especially at these prices. Um, what else? Let's see. The next one up is N N D. Uh, where is it? Oh, sorry, Neo. Neo. A lot of people call it the Chinese Tesla. Uh, Neo. It has a, in that, uh, a very. Uh, similar case of Tesla, but for China. They're building an ecosystem. They're getting into energy. They're getting to uh, devices in the home. Uh, they do something very unique called battery as a service, which is like driving up to a, uh, uh, it's essentially like a terminal. Your car will go into the terminal. Mm -hmm. It will swap the battery. So like, instead of filling up your car with gas, you just literally take the whole battery out, swap it, and pull your car out. And this can be done within three minutes. So it's like going to a gas station. This is ideal for uh, city living where everybody, you know, people live in apartments, they might not have access to a dedicated garage space where they can have dedicated charging. This is genius on the part. I see this uh, barriers of service. They're continuing to grow, they're continuing to add. Uh, they just had a deal to with another company to build more of these barriers of service swap stations. Um, I think, you know, Sky's Limit, they release a new uh, sedan, I think the ET7. Uh, is gorgeous as well. I think Neo is going to be a major player. They're backed by the Chinese government. I don't see this company going anywhere anytime soon. And my long-term positions, I mean, this is going to be a long-term play for me in my long-term price prediction, at least in the next five years, I think this could be a $400 stock. Um, it's, I think it's trading under what it's really worth right now. Um, you see a lot of uh, uh, stock analysts actually have it evaluated at $70, $80. Um, so I think this is on its sale. I love it. I'm always adding shares of Neo. I'll probably add some more. SBE. SBE is Switchback, uh, Switchback Energy Corporation, I think what it stands for. Um, but essentially, it's, it's another SPAC. Um, it's a way to merge in charge point and bring that to the public market. And what is unique about SBE, uh, Switchback Energy, is they have about 70% market share of all the charging right so i think with all these evs coming into play i think especially uh in america with biden making the declaration that he wants to go big on clean energy want to go big on e uh, electric vehicles and with the government trying to convert their fleet into electric vehicles what are electric vehicles going to need they're going to need charging stations i want to get down with the player that's in the lead of that switchback energy is that for me I think this has the ability to really blow up and be a big company. Uh, so that's why I am invested in SBE. I think it really has a lot of runway left. I'm not selling anytime soon. Uh, next one, NNDM. Now you've probably seen this on Wall Street Best. Or this is a popular stock. This is something I got in mostly because Kathy Woods got into it. And I got into NNDM where I get a $9. 27 cents. I don't, I'm not selling this anytime soon. Kathy was just adding it like crazy. I think uh, NNDM, for those who don't know, is a, uh, is a 3D printing company out of Israel. Uh, as we're looking at manufacturing and a lot of things, uh, the need for people to make these intricate pieces that come together because of the way traditional manufacturing is, is no longer necessary. We can 3D print a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, that saves on manufacturing costs tremendously. And what do companies want to do? They want to save on those costs. They've already have, I believe they said they have deals with companies in six continents. They're, I think they're going to continue to grow. Uh, I really like an NDM. It's a, uh, uh, I'll say, I don't know if it's an extreme long-term play for me, but at least probably in the next six to six months to a year is definitely going to stay in my portfolio. Uh, where are we at? Ah, uh, BNGO. So, BNGO is another good play for me. I like it. Uh, it's uh, bio and nano genomics. Genomics is huge. I got in this stock at $5.55. Um, I don't plan on getting out anytime soon. 
Uh, they did a lot of things with, they're using a, a lot of their technology to help actually help with COVID and uh, genome sequencing of COVID and figuring out uh, who's more susceptible to it, who's at a higher risk of dying. They can look at you, run your DNA and be able to see, uh, you know, what are your likelihood of, ha of having advanced complications of it. Genomics is a new way. We see a lot of people on CRISPR. Um, I thought CRISPR had ran up a bit off of the hype. Um, at the time I purchased this, I think uh, bio-nanogenomics they have a lot going for them. I think they were a smaller cap. Uh, uh, they're almost actually at the point, I think I bought them, they were a penny stock. If you use the valuation of a billion dollar market cap as a penny stock, I think they were considered a penny stock at that point. Um, I like it. I might sell some of my shares. I think I have 200. I might sell some of my shares, but I'm, I'm going to keep some for the medium term. I really like uh, bionic genomics. I think uh, with genomics in general, I think as uh, technology, especially the emphasis on COVID-19 and other diseases come up, there's going to be an uh, emphasized need on looking at that from a uh, genetic level and figuring out how to help people. Uh, we are talking about CCIV. We are talking about AMC. The last one I'm going to talk about is uh, Westport Field Systems. Westport Field Systems is interesting. Uh, they uh, announced recently that they had a deal with Amazon to buy a thousand natural gas powered engines uh, for their semi tractor trailers, uh, their semi trucks. So to me, that's a huge thing. So one of the things with EV right now, especially when you're talking about moving a, uh, a lot of payload, a lot of weight, uh, you're going to, you, you can't, it's the, the battery technology is not there yet. It's being developed, but it's not there yet. But what is there? you have natural gas powered engines. And the way that this natural gas is being proposed to be produced is gonna power these engines, it's gonna be uh, carbon negative actually, not carbon neutral, carbon negative actually, it's gonna be better for this uh, environment. So that tells me that Amazon, you know, is saying that we believe in this, we're willing to give this a try. Uh, I think they're gonna to be the first of many orders. Uh, they partner out with Cummings engines to actually produce these engines and send them out to Amazon. Um, so I, I bought this. Um, this is one of the few times I bought the news. Uh, mostly I bought this because I honestly believe that this stock is just the beginning. The next major company to announce that they're going to do this, maybe Walmart or something like that, who wants to get ahead of the clean energy curve, um, is going to really send this stock to the stratosphere, in my opinion. Um, so that's why I bought Westport Fuel Systems. I have about 500 shares. I'll probably end up selling 400. I try to buy 500. I try to make a quick buck off of it, but at least 100 of the shares I'm going to keep. For the longer term, those 400 I'll probably look at for an exit point in the next couple of weeks. Um, but Westport Fuel Systems is something that I really like. Uh, what about you, Troy? What are some stocks that you're into that you're that you're looking at um, that can have some really good potential? So um, my portfolio is relatively boring at the moment. Um, I've moved everything over here into Fidelity. Um, so what I've done is I've reorganized uh, my 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 portfolio. Let me fix your crop there, buddy. Uh, there we go. Let's move you. There we go. Put you back in the normal aspect ratio there on the stream. So for my, myself, uh, what I'm going to probably end up doing is I'm going to end up probably with some money in Robinhood used for things that I want to buy and sell um, a little sooner. We've talked about the settling, um, and Robinhood's talked a lot about that, that, you know, um, T plus two. Um, whereas here in Fidelity, waiting for funds to settle, buying shares and selling them before results in good faith violations with them, where Robin Hood doesn't have that. So, in my Fidelity, primarily are a lot of stocks that I plan on holding uh, indefinitely. Uh, that's the Tesla. And if you look here, you got Goldman Sachs, I got uh, Coca Cola, I have my Vanguard index funds, including just the regular SP 500, along with the high dividend yield. Um, international uh, high yield in ETFs, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, General Motors, Microsoft, Apple, Home Depot, uh, McDonald's, and then here I do still have my AMC shares over here and my Sundial and my Churchill up there. Now the big thing here is the, with most of these stocks with the exception of Tesla, Churchill, Sundial, and AMC, the rest of these are all dividend stocks. So here is where I will hold my dividend stocks, Mike. Uh, these are companies that aren't going anywhere. These are blue chip stocks, but one thing they have is low volatility. What that means is these are companies like Coca-Cola. There's no more, you know, when you see a company like Tesla, there's more money that they can be raised via their stock 
to do different things. They don't, you know, absolutely dominate the car market by any means. And they have new models and new things they want to bring about. There's nothing new that Coca-Cola is trying to do out there. Yeah. They're, they're dominant in the market. Um, you know, half of pretty much everything you drink belongs to Coca-Cola. And I also have their competitor, PepsiCo, down there. So you're talking about n over 90% of beverages uh, and soft drinks out there. So by doing that, these are stocks that I will hold indefinitely. I will add to them over time. And I will reinvest their dividends over time. So these are total long-term, you know, 10-year, rest-of-my-life sort of plays on those, Mike. Um, that's what I'm going to use Fidelity for, and I may very well use Robin Hood or another broker for, you know, the, the, quick, the quicker flips, if you will. The AMC, the Sundial, the Churchill, though they're sitting here, eventually I'll keep those and the other ones because I may want to buy them, see them peak out tomorrow before they settle in a brokerage like Fidelity, but I can get out of those in Robinhood uh, without triggering any sort of good faith violations. Uh, that's one of the things that Robinhood has uh, made semi, you know, attractive is the term I will use when it comes to doing yeah. things like that. Because um, I remember I bought Sundial and I watched it uh, peak out the other day and they were telling me that, you know, I was going to incur a good faith violation if I had sold it that soon. I'm like, oh man. So as a result, it fell backwards from that peak that I had at. But here is where I keep my dividend stocks. I'm big and a believer in dividend stocks. Either your company is taking all of the money in and hopefully they're reinvesting it back in themselves or your company large enough uh, where there's not much more investment needs to be done like Coca-Cola, like McDonald's. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. It's not like, oh, man, if only I had enough money, they would open another McDonald's somewhere. You know, um, same thing with PepsiCo. Um, Merck, Johnson & Johnson. These are large blue chip companies that are not going anywhere, that will continue to grow over time, that have, you know, deep, strong utility. They're not going anywhere. And now we'll reinvest their dividends over time and continue to add to these shares over time. That's my ultimate goal with these. And here, they will live in my Fidelity account while, um, you know, whenever I'm done, whenever I'm done with my broken heart here on Valentine's Day from Robin Hood for what they did, we beat mm -hmm. that to death in our previous streams. Um, them providing only downward pressure on those stocks really crushed uh, the AMCs of the world, the GameStops of the world. You know, at this point, that horse has uh, absolutely been beat to death. But Fidelity will live my dividend stocks. Um, I'm with you. Electric vehicles are the future. When you are a investor, um, especially if you're a new investor, you want to ask yourself, what is what are your goals? So I have long-term stability goals with my dividend stocks. And then I have shorter term goals that I'm looking for growth stocks. I'm looking to make money in Churchill Capital. I'm looking for them to announce that share to pop and me to sell and get out with my money. That's what I'm looking for in that. Tesla is moving over here because, I, like I agree with you, that's a long term play. The reality is electric vehicles are the future. We know that the president of the United States, our new president, wants to have an all American, you know, his the government fleet. He wants to be all electric. We know that companies like GM want to be all electric by 2035. And the reality is we are going to see the end of the internal combustion engine in our lifetimes, Mike, Lord willing. Uh, we live that, you know, uh, long uh, lives and healthy lives, of course. We're going to see the end of the internal combustion engine. We are going to see all the vehicles on the road be electric vehicles one day, Mike. So I'm put, we're putting our hands in a lot of these electric vehicle companies because they will grow over time. And as you can see, GM doing a lot better than, say, Ford. Um, if I had that on top, uh, you know, Ford stock, Ford is dabbling with their electric Mustang, and they have yeah. at least one other electric car. Call but like Maki or something like that. Mm-hmm. But you know, Ford stock is down here. Um, but the reality is, GM is popped, and they're growing rapidly solely because I'm not used to for they made a big commitment to EV yeah but they made a huge commitment to EV they said every vehicle they have is going to be electric by 2035 and we're going to see a lot more of that out of other companies so that's what I'm doing right now I've reorganized a lot of my profile um, let's see because you can see the jump they had when they make this announcement you know they've been they've been on a nice ride over this past month where they hit this kind of dip here on the 27th and you know they're climbing uh over time they have a long-term goal and commitment to electric vehicles electric vehicles are the future um though our, we're not professional financial advisors i'm huge on it for a long-term play for growth in the long term and then aside from that um can't say it enough dividend stocks what that means is these are companies 
that are taking parts of their profit and paying them back to you, putting it directly in your pocket, and you can decide what you want to do with it. You can decide if you wish to uh, reinvest it. That's what I'm going to be doing with all that money. Uh, reinvesting over time, it kind of generates a snowball effect. So, you know, no, my, I'm a little boring at the moment, Mike. And as far aside from the Sundial, the AMC that I'm still holding, uh, the Tesla, I'm in with you on all the EV companies. That's pretty much it for me, man. Um, nothing, uh, nothing new at the moment. And you know, boring is not a good thing. Uh, boring usually means you're investing more stable. Mm -hmm. um, me, <laughs> I like to ride the lightning a little bit. <laughs> Um, but you're not riding uh, it with every cent you got now. You, you got some stable. Yeah, cars, you know? and uh, I'm going to show you, and this is something that's uh, pretty cool with the Fidelity. Um, I don't know if you might have told you about this, um, that you can let me share my screen real quick. This is called Fidelity Active uh, Trader Pro, and it gives you better better access, more information, uh, especially if you want to be an active trader of your stocks. Um, this is my Fidelity account. And you can do things in here. You can pull up charts and everything. You can, you know, you can plot your charts out. You can look at the trends and things. It's uh, very, very cool. It, it, it sits on your desktop. Um, it, it syncs up your Fidelity accounts. Um, I like it. And uh, it gives you a little bit more information uh, for those who want to trade actively. So this is my all my accounts at Fidelity. Um, it's a lot more money to play with here, of course. Um, and I'll eventually merge over my Robinhood into here. And uh, you see, I'm in a lot of the same similar stocks. Um, but one thing that is cool about Fidelity, you can trade that you can't do a Robinhood. You can trade in the OTC, the over-the-counter uh, uh, stocks. So here's something that if you are in Fidelity, I would advise myself because I can only advise myself because I'm not a financial planner. But if you want to get some more exposure to crypto cryptocurrency, you have something called ETEHE -E and GP, uh, GBTC. These are both grayscale, essentially crypto, uh, essentially they're grayscale crypto uh, index funds, if you will, or not even index funds, uh, ETFs. Um, and I think these were good. They, they, they did a job, good job in a uh, way of saying, if you have money and let's say maybe an IRA or something else, and you can't, you want to buy, you want more exposure to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Here's a great way to do it. I love these. I've added, I think I have 150 shares of e, uh, the ETH uh, ETF and 135 shares of the BTC one. I'm going to add more because I love that. This is something you can do that you can't do in Robinhood, but you can do in some of these more traditional brokerages. Um, you can definitely do in Fidelity. You can add uh, some of these uh, over the counter. Uh, uh, stocks in there and, and i'm really big into that um i, I liked mara mara uh, is marathon they do a lot of bitcoin mining um i had 100 shares of that um they do a lot of bitcoin mining and uh that's going of course going to continue to grow as bitcoin continues to become more and more lucrative and have more companies trying to get in to do the, uh, do the mining i like uh, i like mara a lot um they have another one called riot that's another one that has a lot of riot blockchain Thing. It has a lot of exposure to cryptocurrency. It's another one, a good one to get into if that's something you want to add to in your traditional portfolio without actually owning uh, Bitcoin. Um, very good, very, very, very good companies. Um, you see, I, I had some Upwork here. I actually sold a call on this. So I'm going to have to be forced to sell eventually, um, but made a good profit off of this. Um, Peloton, I got into that uh, somewhere in here. Uh, of course, more Tesla. I think I, about, I think I totaled up like a hundred and something Tesla shares. Uh, it, this is several accounts, so it doesn't make it the easiest to look at. Uh, Apple Plug is another good one. Um, Plug is uh, another clean energy uh, feeling. Uh, they do hydrogen, I believe. Um, so that's another good, good one too. If you want to add EV exposure space, uh, this one took a little bit of a hit because. Uh, they were supposed to do a test of, of uh, the next test for their uh, space, uh, their spaceship, this past weekend, but it got delayed because of, yeah, technical. They didn't say technical difficulties. They said using more technical analysis. I believe uh, that's a nice way of saying they had te technical dif uh, difficulties. So their their price probably going to take a little bit of a beating. But uh, if they can actually commercialize space travel, 
that's going to be very impressive. Uh, some companies you can't go wrong with are Apple, Microsoft, Disney, uh, JP Morgan, DraftKings. I think this DraftKings, I think they have a big, uh, uh, this is just the beginning for DraftKings. Once it becomes legalized in all 50 states, yeah. Yeah. Definitely have. I think this is. I think this is still cheap for the stock. Target. I like Target because you know what? They're digitalizing. They're the. Uh, uh, they're digitalizing their their base. Um, they're becoming more active as far as uh, online commerce. And um, I mean, Target. Every time I go to Tar Target, it's popping. So you know, I like Target. I like what they're doing. I'm into that. Uh, Facebook. Oh, here's another good one. Micro Strategies. Micro Strategies, uh, what they did, uh, they're a software company based out of Virginia, uh, Northern Virginia, actually. Um, but what they did uh, was essentially they turned all their cash reserves essentially into Bitcoin. And as the price of Bitcoin went up, you know, so did their, <laughs> so, did, so did the value of this company. You can see I got it in at 460 and its current stock price is now over $1,000. Um, you want to see more companies do this. They're looking at micro strategies. Grayscale is another one. They're looking at some of these companies doing this and adding, transitioning their cash reserves to Bitcoin. And I mean, when Bitcoin goes up, they, you know, so does the prop, you know, the value of their company by virtue they have those in their cash reserves. Um, so that's, you know, that's something to definitely look at. Uh, of course, I got a little bit of AMC, a little bit of GME in here. I'm not selling those because, you know, I just want to stick it to the proverbial man. Um, then a bunch of Neo, I mean, I probably have about, Four or five hundred shares of Neo in here, because um, I'm making the so not even so. And then Ark Invest, these are good things. If you want, if you, if all this is too confusing to y'all, if you like Ark Invest, I invest in some of that. Uh, and mostly, I've been doing that as a benchmark because I, the way I set up some of my accounts, I want to keep. I don't want my cash just sitting there, not gaining. You know. You don't want to be too risky with all your cash, but I like ARK Invest. I know it's going to way outpace the market, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, if it's going to outpace the market, it's going to help grow my money. And I don't want my money sitting in the account not doing anything. I don't want my money uh, not keeping up with inflation. I want it to continue to grow. So I look at ARK Invest as a good way to keep, not to be as risky, because it's going to ARK Invest is going to be a little bit more riskier than, let's say, the, you know, uh, BLO or something like that. Um, which is the Vanguard equivalent of the uh, S&P 500. But uh, it's going to allow my money to grow. I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit more on the bullish side. Some people are more conservative. You have to find that right balance uh, for you as far as in terms of what you're going to do for investing. I, I'm, I'm definitely more aggressive. I'm, I like spreading out my asset classes and investing in crypto, of course, stocks, uh, uh, real estate, and big into that. I use something called Fundrise. Um, we'll probably do, talk about that, something like that later about real estate on a few rental properties too. That's a good asset class to get to get into. Maybe right now, right now, because interest rates are so low, that's causing the housing market to inflate, and a lot of the prices of properties are, in my opinion, more than they're worth at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, especially in certain certain demographics. I know back home, we're both from the D.C. area. Um, man, I just looked at, at one of my rental props. I saw the, how much uh, they're evaluating that, and I'm like, it's not worth that much in my head. But if you say so, right? And I look around, I'm looking at comps at houses in my neighborhood that are selling for all this money. I'm like, you know, it's, it's because it's, it's two things. Interest rates are the all time low, and the Fed's pushing those down, which is overall probably not that good for the overall economy out the nation. Uh, another bullish case for Bitcoin. But, you know, compound that with the pandemic and a lot of people aren't selling. So you have limited supply, very cheap to borrow money. You're going to, you know, shoot up the housing prices. So um, that's something that, you know, you could look into. And if you don't want to own, I mean, it's, it can be a headache owning actual tangible real estate uh, investment properties. You can do something like Fundrise. Uh, we're not sponsored by them. I'm just telling you something that I use uh, mm -hmm. to give you even more a diversification as far as asset classes. They'll they'll invest your money into different real estate projects for you and they'll give you a nice return. You get a nice UI to see what your, what your money's doing. But that's more of a long term, illiquid. Real estate is very illiquid. You can't get your money now. You can sell stocks. You can't sell real estate like that. So long, longer term plays. But 
uh, for the purpose of this is you, you got to figure out what's that right balance for you, Troy. Everybody has a different formula for themselves. Some people are super risky. They'll throw almost all their money into Sundial growers and, you know, you know, they'll, 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 they'll put it all on black. Right. And, you know, come hell or high water, they're just hoping to hit and make it big. And you got some people who are more conservative. Um, they might be like you, they might be total maximalist for the dividend. I've seen people have total dividend portfolios and that's cool because that's a guarantee, you know, dividends are pretty much almost guaranteed. I don't know if they are guaranteed, but that's a very steady quarterly income that you can use, especially if you're looking older at your retirement or something like that. You want that guaranteed income. You can, you can, you can try to live off of dividends. There's so many ways that you can make money, so many ways that you can try to invest. You have to figure out what is the right strategy for you. Like I say, we, we, we know a guy, a good friend of ours, he's 100% on crypto. He tells me F those stocks every day. So, <laughs> you know, he, he's, a, he's all in on crypto. But that works for him. I like crypto. I'm not all, I'm not 100% where I'm going to put all my stuff in there. But he does. He's convicted about it. He loves it. And more power to him. He's doing really great things, uh, amazing things over there. So you got to figure out what's that going to be for you. You're going to, you know, how are you going to invest your money? The biggest thing with this channel is we want people to know. You have to invest your money somehow, some way. You can't let it just sit in the bank account. And if you're not investing, you have to figure out how do I get into the game, right? It's never too late to start, ever too late to start. You got to be able to figure out how can I, is it me picking up an extra job or picking up an extra shift to get a little extra cash I can start off with or me cutting back. Maybe I can, you know, go in with some friends and we can share a login from Netflix or something. I can save that money using it. Whatever you got to do, however you got to figure it out, you got to get into the game. You know, time is your greatest ally when it comes to investing. The longer time you have your money to be invested, the more substantial your gains will be um, if you invest wisely. Um, and that's something that we can't say enough. We made some videos about it, and that's something we can't say enough. You got to get in the game. You can't sit there and have your money on the sidelines. You can't be one of those would have, could have, should have people. I wish I would have mm -hmm. bought, you know, Amazon. I wish I would have bought this. I would. What's going to be the next Amazon? What's going to be the next Tesla? What's going to be the next any of those companies, right? You know, I, I thought about investing in them. I just did not didn't find time. Or I didn't, you know, you can't make excuses. You got to find a way to get it done. Some cases are harder than others, but you got to figure out, be creative, you know, in ways to try to really, you know, at the very minimum, uh, set up for your future, set up for your retirement. You know, nobody wants to work until they die. You know, you want to have to enjoy that golden life of your time where you can be retired and you can travel, you can live your life or do. Maybe you want to retire early and pursue something you want to do. Like, you know, I don't know about you, Troy, but I have other aspirations that I want to do outside of my nine to five. Um, and this investing is a good way to give you a kickstart and to uh, be able to do that. So that's part of my, uh, you know, my five to 10 year plan is retiring from my traditional job and doing something I like to do, make something along the lines of finance because, it's, it's something you got to find your passion, you know, it's something that's, uh, uh, you might not be passionate about finances, but that could be the key to unlocking your passion, giving you the ability to go chase whatever your passion may be. Um, so it's, you got to get in the game. That's, that's one of the most important things about this channel is trying to get in the game, get some skin in the game. You know, it, you know, they say scared money don't make money. So, you know, if you're, if your money's in the bank, it's scared money, you know, get out in the field, play in the game coach. You know, that's what I say. <laughs> And to touch on that, you're for each individual, um, your, your own portfolio. So, like, I'm going 50%, me personally, my amateur opinion is 50% of my money is going to be in stable blue chip, um, dividend paying stocks that I want to let snowball. I've decided to put 25% of my assets, my disposable assets that I'm going to invest in the cryptocurrency, and I may up that over time. And 25% will be in growth stops looking for. You know, the CCIVs, looking for the sundial growers, looking for the uh, short term, you know, few weeks, if not, you know, one week or so flips where I'm trying to make a little bit of money uh, aggressively in that. And that's just my balance that I've just come to within the past few weeks. I realized that I didn't have enough money, uh, enough of my portfolio in cryptocurrency. It was, you know, less than 5%. And I decided to up that. And already I've seen, you know, quite the returns on that. Um, just uh, in, I really wish uh, I have Coinbase at the moment when the, for my cryptocurrency, and I really wish there was a more convenient uh, charting of that that will show the growth. But I, I, I recommend something. I recommend something to you right now, friend. Okay. It's called Blockfolio. 
Um, Blockfolio is a good way. Uh, I can you can put in what your transaction, what the cost was, and it'll keep a history of you know what you have, and it'll give you your overall simplified portfolio. There we go. See that? Um, see, and I would like to be able to click, click, and see like look because I I know what the amounts have done. But I'm like, man. It, 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 yeah, it Coinbase is terrible at that. It's I, I horrible at that. Coinbase is terrible at that. Um, good for you know buying for especially for noobs and such. But it's like, man, like yeah. I want to get, I want to see the growth over time, and it's really, it's quite difficult to to show that. Yeah, I don't know why they're so bad at that. I'm trying to me trying to figure out how much I got or you know what my percent gain and stuff like that. It's terrible, at Coinbase. I don't understand for all the money that flows in. And out of there and all the little transaction fees they charge every time you want to buy or sell your crypto you think they would have a better way of uh showing you that i mean uh they my black voice an app i was trying to see if they had a web version um uh i'll put it in the camera maybe maybe people can see it but i like black folio it's it's price aren't always the most accurate um it looks like this um it's price aren't always the most accurate oh it looks terrible um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It looks, it looks bad. Um, yeah. So, I, I, yeah, no I just had to log in just to take a look yeah. at my yeah. own. So, Coinbase yeah. is what I have, um, you know, my crypto balances in. And, you, you know, keep you your balances see. there, but just track it with Blockfolio. Yeah. It just makes it so, better. you can see where it's like I didn't have any money in my, you know, back here and you know, none at all. And then, literally, I kind of put just this little bit here and then I put this bump. And this is all the money um, that I actually put in. About eighteen hundred dollars worth. So again, I had nothing in it. As we just said, I, I realized, you know what? I'm loafing on my cryptocurrency. And then I put, you know, about a thousand in. And then I looked around. I was like, you know what? I started buying a bunch. And you can see this straight line jump. That's just me buying, right? That's about eighteen hundred bucks worth. Um, and I don't, you know, the quick math on top of my head, and wham, just that fast, just from, you know, what is this? The tenth. It's been four days, Mike. Um, yeah. It's been four days, and wham, you know that that's almost you know added another twelve hundred dollars worth of value there. Um, and then see, they have the watch list here, but like uh, my actual portfolio. There we go. Um, so no actual cash sitting here, no USD coin, but my Ethereum and my Algorand, the Litecoin, my Stellar Luma. So my uh, they they do a really awful job. You can see what how much of each is allocated. 15% of my portfolio is sitting here in Ethereum, and I'm buying a lot of the altcoins here, and they've been growing rapidly. But yeah, their yeah. interface, as far as showing your gains, are pretty poor. It's um, terrible. It's terrible. Um, and then I'm earning rewards on some of these. What's funny is at least one of these, I believe it was the Stellar, I had to double check with my wife, they had a, uh, yep, here it is. So they had a thing, Mike, where you could have done, they would give you $10 of free Stellar in its value at the time, just for watching videos on Coinbase. Yeah, and I they did. did. A, I, took I did a of bunch that. of them right yeah. here on the, on the second, and like you know the, that same amount of money has just skyrocketed um, for for Stellar's just because all the entire market has grown over time. So, but yeah, their their portfolio and the way of looking at it is awful. But yeah, you can see this kind of straight line. Me bought, buying, 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 and then you know putting about. Eighteen hundred dollars worth because I bought them all in like hundred dollar increments minus the fees that Coinbase does charge. They do have some hefty fees on them, but um, the growth that I've seen in cryptocurrency. So putting uh, my goals, they're not all there yet. I still have a lot of uh, uninvested cash that I'll be looking to execute in the following weeks. Um, I'm you know in case things drop, if something you believe in drops, I call that a sale. Buy it, you know, lower your dollar cost averages over time. And if, you know, I'm putting about a quarter of my portfolio in cryptocurrency, a quarter of it in the uh, more aggressive growth stock trading, looking for the opportunities like the CCIV, the, the switchback, um, you know, yeah. things of that nature. And then 50% is just going to be my stable, you know, slow and steady snowball rolling down the hill towards my own retirement. Me, I'm a federal government employee. I will be um, executing that full federal government retirement so I, I'm in this game for uh, till I hit 50, man. That's the mandatory minimum for me. You get to retire 20 years in the federal government if you work in the federal government. 20 years at any uh, if you're over the age of 50, or 25 years at any age. I'll hit 25 years at 50. So it's kind of perfect tie there. I'll be there uh, to that long. And it's going to take me earning a lot of money um, to retire before that. So 
Yeah, just because, I'm, of the, uh, just because the know, awesome benefits yeah. that a federal government retired. You get pensions. federal government, you still get pensions. So that's mm-hmm. something that most people we're talking don't pensions. Get. I'm getting uh, matches on yeah. my TSP. Um, I don't have my. I have to reset my TSP password. I would show that um, my TSP retirement account is grown into the six figures, and see that is only invested in funds. That is entirely in S and P five hundred, large and small cap. So um, I even though I do own some in my uh, Fidelity that I show, it's not a ton because my primary retirement is in that, and I can't invest my retirement in individual stocks. That's one side effect of the TSP uh, system. So yeah, and that, my wife she's. Also, a federal government employee, so she's like, you know, I've looked at that and I was like, I wish I could pull that money out. Then I know I can make more money than that, you know, <laughs> what the TSP system does, but unfortunately, you can't. But the cool thing is, you stick your hands shit. in her pockets, nah. It's... <laughs> yeah, all for one and one for all, you know. Uh, so, fine, but, but there's uh, nothing wrong for good old fashioned. Just, just make sure she does have invested in the uh, the CDS. Yeah, she, she, she got it. She got it. Yeah, she got it in the right funds. Because there's a lot yeah, of people, want, for those who are in federal government. Got it on the wrong funds. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm in the life cycle fund for 2040. Oh, you're getting hosed. That's what you're doing. Yeah. They're, they're going to give yeah. you like a whopping 1% on the money that you put in there. And meanwhile, they're going to go invest in the market. S&P 500, 8% on average, year in, year out, since like 1957. Can't beat it. Um, that's, you know, stable growth for retirement. You don't want with minimal risk. Again, net professionals. But that's one thing. Obviously, as me and Mike have gained our experience, we're doing really good with our individual stock returns. Um, see, my numbers are all jacked up in Robinhood now because I've pulled out my money. Um, yeah, it, looks, it makes it look it, weird. It makes it look yeah. real jacked up. So let me see. Uh, you know, we're up over the last three months. It's not 100%. That's just, I don't even know where that percentage is all jacked up, but the amount is the same. Um even for the last year, and you can see where I didn't have anything in Robinhood, and then wham, as we put money in, you can see the growth over time, that amount since, you know, when was this, August, the beginning of August, that 14 grand or so, um, minus the uh, teeth kicking I ate over AMC, thanks Robinhood, but yeah. <laughs> so we were, we were, I was looking a lot like 20k up since August, but uh, you know, so th- those numbers are kind of ruined, but as we're getting better and better, we're realizing and taking aggressive advantage of this uh, incredible bull market. Really, it's been, Mike, since the uh, absolute bottom, March 27th, I think was the lowest day of 2020 in the pandemic in the stock market. But um, it was definitely late March. The, the, the growth has been incredible. This is a bull market for stock. This is a bull market for cryptocurrency. And the question is, are you going along for that ride? So yeah, uh, make and- your money work for you. And this is funny. I'm looking at it. Since you were talking about how much you would have made if it wasn't for Robin Hood, mm-hmm. uh, I just look back. I can share this real quick. Well, they hooked me up with, with, with Power Slam there, man. Yeah. I, I'm look, you can Matter see. Matter of fact, that's the spike you see here. Um, right yeah. there. That, that's the spike you see. Uh, that's January 27th. That was the day that they look. made that announcement. And you can yeah. see the immediate dip, that I, the, 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 the chewing that I took essentially to my current level. So you know we were up yeah. Look, look, look at you can see the same thing in mine. Yeah, twenty mm-hmm. seventh, twenty seventh. I'm ride high, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then look, twenty eighth. That joint slams down. I mean, overall, the overall is still up two hundred percent. But like, imagine what this would have been. Oh yes, Robin and mind you, it was on its way up. It was on so, its way up, and they yeah. absolutely snuffed us. So look, this is at what fifty five. And went all the way down to 46. So you could say Robin Hood took about nine grand out of my pocket. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's how I feel about that. One oh, yeah. They took right out of, my grand out of my pocket. So that's why I'm salty and that's why I'm leaving. Uh, but, yeah, you know, that I, when you said that, I went back and looked at my chart. Uh-huh. Like, you know, it's just thieving, man. It's <laughs> just like, I'm just, that's what most of me. It's the principle behind the effect. You know, you, if I'm going to lose my money, let me lose it the right way. Let me lose let it in the market. Fair and square in yeah, the market. Let me just don't, lose it in the market. The market if the market hoses me overall and I just did make a wise investment, then that's fine. You know, this is more risky play, and I acknowledge that. That's why I'm not too upset. I'm more upset because the reason why it didn't work, and that's because of manipulation. That's because Robin Hood and other brokers brought upon themselves and we're getting back on this horse, but it just pisses me off that it's only because of them and them prying nothing but downward pressure on these stock prices that this is what happened. You know, this is going to take off. Maybe AMC wouldn't have went to, uh, uh, you know, GameStop levels, but it, I could have saw it running up to a hundred bucks. You know, that's just, oh man, that's just frustrating. Way. 
it's that's frustrating. It's frustrating. That's why. That's why. That's you know, That's why we're leaving. That's why we're migrating away. Uh, and honestly, I can still say we have a friend that's just getting started. He's blessing a Robin Hood. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but for newbies, Robin Hood's. It's, it's the best for newbies. It's, it's, it's the best. Yeah. It's still the best. Um, but once I say, once you graduate, get out of there. Um, you know, they. It, I don't know if they'll ever be forgiven. Um, unless they give me my money back. You know, so but they're never going to do that. So. Huh. Yeah, I don't. We don't want to get off on a tangent again, but that yeah. <laughs> that just that's grinds my gears. Oh my gosh, I hate Robin Hood for doing that. Um, but uh, anyway, we, we've been we've been going for a while. Uh, we're gonna watch this upcoming market um, to see what's gonna happen um, this week. Uh, it's a short week, but we could see some CCIV news possibly. We could see possibly on Tuesday. Uh, more short interest, actual factual information comes out with AMC. We also see a pop there. You never know. Um, that's that's why I'm holding. I'm going to keep holding in perpetuity um, till I get my money back. I'm being stubborn and hitting that. Um, and it's good. it's a lot of other things that be going on with the market. We'll see what happens with st- any further uh, movement with stimulus talks. So overall, uh, markets at all time highs right now. Um, a lot of people said it's going to be a bubble, it's going to pop. I think that will happen at some point in time. Not sure what happened this year. In time, not sure what happened the past year. Time, not sure what happened this year. Time, time. The catalyst for the pop. But you know, uh, right now we're gonna keep watching on it. We'll probably try to do another live stream. Uh, if something significant happens, we'll do one this week. Um, if not, maybe we'll try to do one again next week um, to do another recap, look look ahead, uh, like we're doing today. Um, and hopefully, we'll do one where we'll talk about how to get started with crypto. Um, mm-hmm. like you had mentioned, Troy, how to what's the what you know, I, I want to invest in crypto. I actually want to own the tangible coin. What you know, what are my steps to do that? So might do that. Maybe we can even bring a guest on to help, uh to walk through with that. that so we'll, we'll see how all that goes. And but, uh, uh, we'll definitely know. want to plug our uh, videos that we do here, uh, especially on YouTube. Uh we have our in the black channel, have it right up here, uh youtube.com forward slash C four slash in the black money. Um you can look you can find us right there. I have it up there on the uh, corner of our screen. You can see us currently live there as well. But, um, you know, we have a, a host of videos that we're developing over time. Our most recent is why savings are for suckers. And it's for the very reason we're talking about right here. You know, I know a lot of people who pile up their money in just, you know, a, a very low interest, less than 1% savings account. And meanwhile, you know, look at the gains that, you know, me and Mike are able to pull out of the market as we are not professionals. But, there are gains to be had there um, with varying levels of risk and strategy that you can use to attack. Make your money work for you. That's what people do. Rich people don't just yeah. stick their money in a, in a vault and dive in it like Scrooge McDuck. Um, <laughs> they make their money work those for bank, them. Those yeah. banks are using your money. They're not just sitting in some mm-hmm. vault. They're using your money to do loans and stuff like that. So <laughs> they're using your money to work for them. Mm-hmm. We're also on Twitter. Um, you can find the thoughts of me and Mike as we uh, discuss various things. Also, when we're live and things of that nature, at real underscore in the black on Twitter. And finally, we're also on Facebook at In the Black Money uh, on Facebook. You so follow us on all three guys. Uh, we'll be sharing our thoughts. You'll see our videos. You see our live streams and the actual created con- curated videos that we make. Um, and we will be definitely back with you more this week. That's all I have for the people, Mike. How about you? That's all I got. We like to thank you watching. guys. Thank all the thank you all for watching. We're, we're this has definitely been taking off and growing rapidly. We appreciate you all and the, have a good day. Hopefully, you have a very warm. I know it's cold in a lot of country. Uh, Valentine's Day, and um, we love you guys. Happy Valentine's yes. Day. Stay blessed. <laughs> Stay blessed.